Okay. Okay, guys. Good evening. Let's let's start and continue with uh, where we left off. So this is uh, third lecture on basic elasticity. So if you recall, we have started with uh, uh, understanding the whole syllabus. Then we understood what stresses are, uh, what are the sign conventions, how you can write stress tensor for a three D stress element, two uh, D stress element, and then we have seen uh, what are principal stresses how these principal stresses will be calculated using a formula, then how these principal stresses are, can be calculated using eigenvalue uh, properties. And <clears throat> we have seen one generalized formula for calculating stresses on uh, in, in any inclined plane. Now, the next topic, which, what we need to do is we need to calculate these strains. So I'll move ahead. I'll skip all this. Anyhow, we have done this. So this is the reason we have done uh, derivation for stresses. So that now, once we enter into the next part, you will understand this easily now. So guys, can you please help me uh, for a 3D stress element? How many stresses you people uh, remember we have? So if I simply, now I'll, I'm telling you the easiest way to write and remember all the formulas because we have done the hard work. And then later, I will show you what is known as generalized Hooke's law, which is like one definite question in your gate exam. Whatever we have done up till now, right? There is a question in 2023 on this part itself. They ask us to calculate what is tau max. You don't know. You don't have a formula for tau max as of now. But still, let's let's see and let's understand this. So in a 3D stress element, when I say 3D, you're talking about X, Y, and Z direction. So you have stress in X direction. You have normal stress in Y direction. You have normal stress in Z direction. So you have three normal stresses. All right. And you have three shear stresses. So what is shear stress in X, Y plane? It always acts in a plane, right? Area, parallel. So X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z. So you have three normal stresses. And you have three shear stresses. This we have already learned. Similarly, in 2D, we have only three unknowns, which is sigma X. Sigma y and tau x y. When we talk about 2D, there is nothing like z. So whatever z terms you see here will automatically go to zero. All right. Now comes the next part, which is new topic. What about strains now? So we all know what is basic definition of strain, right? We'll say strain is change in length divided by original length. That's what the basic formula we have always learned. But it is not that straightforward here. We will see what is Hooke's law and how strain can be computed. But basic formula is strain, any strain is if you apply some stresses, what is the change in length because of that divided by original length. So I'm not, I'll give you all these basic formulas. As of now, I'm not interested in uh, those formulas. What I want you to understand is in a 3D stress system, you have six stresses, all right? And you have six strains corresponding to each stress. So when we say sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, which are normal stresses, we have three normal strains, epsilon x, epsilon y, epsilon z. So three normal strain corresponding to three normal stresses. And you will understand the physical significance in a few minutes. And gamma x, y, gamma x, z, and gamma y, z, are the corresponding shear strains. So there are six unknown stresses. There are six unknown strains. And now this is the new quantity which you have uh, seen now. So keep this in mind. <clears throat> there are all together as of now, till now what we have studied, there are 12 unknowns, what we have in a 3D stress system. All right. And now, the next term, which is very important, guys, please listen to this. For a 3D, uh, let, let me give this heading also. We are talking about a 3D problem. And you know your real life is 3D, right? A 3D problem is one in which you have displacements which are three. Displacement in X direction, displacement in Y direction, and displacement in Z direction denoted as UVW. Now, what do you understood with this? When we talk about our 3D problem, 
there are three displacement unknowns because you are talking about 3D. So displacement along X, Y, and Z direction. So a body maybe is displacing in X direction somewhat, displacing in Y direction somewhat, displacing in Z direction somewhat. These are three displacements. Then with these displacements, you can calculate strains. You need to calculate six strains, guys. And then with this, you need to calculate six stresses. All right. So what I'm trying to tell you is in actual problem, actual problem means in real life problems, 3D problems, there are 15 unknowns. So if you want to solve any structural numerical or if you use any software, I've seen people using ANSYS, sometimes Abacus, OptiStruct. You can use even some coding things like Python, MATLAB to write your FE codes. What I'm trying to tell you is if you solve any structural problem, you give, uh, you design a load, you do a design a structure. Let's say I initially started with the pen. You design a pen, you apply load to it. Now internally software, what it will do is it will mesh this system. All right, and at each node, it will solve for these 15 unknowns. Meaning you will calculate deflections. Then corresponding to deflections, you will calculate strains. And once you know strains, you will hook's law to calculate stresses. And in the end, it will tell you that when you pull it, let's say your system will fail here and it will broke into two pieces. That means stresses here are very high. That's what the whole idea is. That's what we try to understand in this. Can you just give, give me a quick nod? Is this fine for all of you? Guys, is this clear? Good, 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 good. Okay, perfect. Now I'll come to, uh, I'll revise everything. So please listen to this carefully, what we have done in first two lectures. It is definitely uh, related to that. So now if I want to calculate strains on any arbitrary plane, like we did a whole one lecture, and derived each and everything for stress transformation, right? You can calculate stress at an, on a plane at an angle of theta, something like this. So if you have something like this, you know what is this? This is sigma x, this is sigma y, these are tau x, y. And similarly, this is the plane at an angle theta at which you can calculate your normal stresses and at which you can calculate your shear stresses. You know these formulas, guys. This is sigma x, this is tau xy, and this is sigma y. So if you want to calculate stresses normal to this plane, this is the formula which we have derived using force polygon method in lecture 2. Let me just quickly write it. Sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 into cos 2 theta plus tau xy sine 2 theta. Everyone is fine in this. Everyone has seen this uh, in last class. Now, when we talk about strain, right, guys, because we have already done the hard work, we need not to derive new things now. I'm giving you a very simple, sweet shortcut, which will help you to solve anything related to strains now. What you're going to do is, I will be replacing, guys, please just remember this part. I will be replacing every normal stress in the formula any normal stress with a normal strain and any shear stress with shear strain divided by two. I can derive this using again force polygon method. We can do transformations. It's perfectly fine. But when, when we did already the hard work in deriving stresses, right? Now we can just only easily relate these quantities. So what do you mean by this? The meaning is this. On any plane, on any plane, let's say I'm talking about this plane. If they don't ask me to calculate stresses, they ask me, ask me to calculate, tell me what are your normal strains. Tell me normal strain to this particular plane. So I will not derive any formula now. Sigma X plus Sigma Y divided by two is replaced into Epsilon X plus Epsilon Y by two plus Epsilon X minus Epsilon Y divided by two 
into cos 2 theta. Now, here comes the important part. This gamma by gamma x by 2 is what the only thing we need to remember from now on. That's the only important part. If it is clear, it's fine. If not, you people also recall on this plane, we have derived formula for tau also. That is shear stress. What was that formula? Sigma x. And I've shown you your exam problem on this. Don't worry, I have more than 50 numericals to make your concepts clear once we finish all this theory. Initially, always structures is bad when we talk about theory. When we start solving numericals on this, it becomes easier. So the shear stress will be replaced by shear strain. Don't forget, divided by 2 equals to epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2 into sine 2 theta minus tau xy will be replaced as gamma xy by 2 into cos 2 theta. So guys, if I learn two formulas, right? If I learn formulas for stresses, automatically my strain formulas are calculated and are over. We have seen few more formulas. If you people recall, so this is, uh, maybe you can take in this way. This is one set. This is second set. Now, please help me. If you people recall, what was formula for calculating principal stresses? Sigma 1, comma 2. We have derived this also. Sigma x. And guys, this is like hard and fast rule. You have to remember stresses equations. I told you this is gifted marks in your gate exam. I'll show you 2023 also. It's very simple, straightforward. Plus minus under root. Sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 whole square plus tau square xy. This is the formula for calculating principal stresses in a 2D stress element. You Where you know what is sigma x, sigma y, everything you know. Now again, very simple, straightforward. What are these guys? What are these? These are nothing but our principal stresses. Sigma 1 is bigger, major principal stress. Sigma 2 is <coughs> smaller, which is minor principal stress. Now, I'll use the same formula. I will not derive anything now. For calculating principal strains, normal stresses will be replaced by normal strains plus minus under root epsilon x minus epsilon y divided by 2 whole square plus tau xy will be replaced as gamma xy by 2 whole square. Guys, is this fine? Is this clear now? Do you people agree? Last formula. Yeah, last formula for principal plane angle. If you recall, theta was 1 by 2 tan inverse of 2 tau xy divided by sigma x minus sigma y. This was the formula, right? Now apply the transformation. It is easier. Now for principal plane, in terms of strains, it will be 1 by 2 tan inverse. Now if you recall, this 2 tau xy will be written as gamma x by 2 and this 2 got cancelled out. So we have gamma xy divided by epsilon x minus epsilon y. That's it. So I have all the formulas which took me uh, like one complete lecture to derive. It was it is completed using some transformation in single minutes. And now whatever we have done and we have calculated for stresses is automatically ready for in terms of strains. Tell me guys, is this fine? Is this clear for all of you? Fine. Good. Now what I'll do is I'll come to the major part. You have already seen this, heard this about a lot, but I want you people to understand this.
<clears throat> which is known as generalized Hooke's law. This is one name. People also say this is known as stress strain relationship. People also say this as constitutive relationship. Or equations, relation or equations, anything you can write. Now I'm not worried about uh, the naming here. If you people have heard about it, if not, it's perfectly fine. But we have seen what is Hooke's law. We always say Hooke's law during our BTEC first year, we have learned stress is directly proportional to strain. This is known as Hooke's law. And this is proportional, right? And to remove it, I have proportionality constant, which is known as Young's modulus. Sometimes you may have heard about catchy terms like shear modulus, Poisson's ratio. So I'll come to these terms now. All right. What are these terms? What is the meaning of each and every statement here, which we are naming? All right. Now let's <clears throat> understand this first. This is, there is a separate lecture on uh, elastic constants. So I will be not only and only talking about Yes, I will not only and only be talking about uh, Young's modulus, shear modulus or Poisson's ratio. I will be talking about bulk modulus and then elastic constants of orthotropic material and isotropic material, 36 constant for normal material and then an isotropic is 21. So don't worry about it. As of now, what I want you to understand is basic thing, which is for isotropic material. Now, let's understand this. Let's say you have a rod which is made up of steel. All right. You pull this rod. It is made up of certain area, certain cross section. All right. The another rod, which I have exactly same length, same dimension, same cross sectional area. And I'm applying same force here, but this rod, I'm just giving you a hypothetical example so that you can understand is made up of rubber. Can you tell me out of these two rods guys, which you expect is more stiffer. Definitely, all of us agrees, steel is a stiffer material compared to rubber, right? When we use the word this stiffer, stiffer material, right? Meaning, in structure terminology, we are saying it's E, which is material property, is very high. So this E of steel, that is nothing but Young's modulus. which is also known as modulus of elasticity is very high compared to Young's modulus of this rubber material. We will see the values later. What is E for steel, for aluminium, for cast iron, all these um, engineering materials. Now, this E is very high. Now, I'll do one thing. What I'll do is I'll pull this with certain amount of force. Now, guys, this is only for your understanding. This is nothing related to Hooke's law. All right. So this I want you to understand before learning things. When you have a body and you pull it, can you tell me what kind of stresses will be generated in the system for steel rod? What is the formula? Formula is force divided by area. My next question to you people is, what will be stresses generated in this rubber rod? Is it more or less, guys? Come on, guys. Is it more or is it less? The stress generated here, are these more or less? Okay. So Vijay told me it, it should be less. It, it, it is less. Other people? Any idea? It depends. So, no, no. My simple question is you're applying same force, the lip. You're applying same force. Cross-sectional area is same. Guys, stress is force by area. It remains same. 
I have seen people ask, uh, give, uh, giving me this answer that stresses are different or this is big, this is small. Stress doesn't depend upon the material. Stress is forced by area. So whether you pull a steel rod or whether you pull a rubber rod, both will have same stresses generated because same force and same area. First misconception to be removed for your mind. Stress is not a material property. It depends upon the force and it depends upon the cross-sectional area on which it acts. First thing removed from your mind, the misconception. Now my second question to you people is, this is really good and you people will love this. I'm giving a very basic uh, Hooke's law. Hooke's law says that stress is directly proportional to strain. Normal stress is directly proportional to normal strain. And in between you have, yes, Young's modulus, which is elastic modulus of elasticity, E here. Now, <coughs> guys, please listen to this carefully. You told me that steel is very stiff. That means this value is very high. You told me rubber is less stiff. So this value will be very low compared to steel. But when we applied them force, same area, we came to know that stresses are same. Now, my question to you people is, if just understand in numbers, so you will get a very clear idea. If let's say if this stress is 100, megapascal. Let's take as 100 unit. Then this stress is also 100 unit. So if you want stress to be 100 unit and E of steel, if you are talking about steel rod, is very high. Can I say strains in steel will be very low compared to if I'll come to this part, stress is still 100 but E for this rubber is very low then strains for this will be very high. Guys, I know this is tricky, but do you understand the point I am stressing on? What I am trying to tell you is to keep this term constant, if E is high, epsilon will be low. If E is low, epsilon will be high, meaning you will understand this now. When you have a steel rod and you pull it with some force, F and everyone knows this, maybe you will going to pull it by this much amount very small amount because it's very stiff rod. Stiff rod means you cannot just apply some force and change the shape of the body. Whereas if you people agree, something like this will happen in rubber rod. So what is more guys? Strains are more. Hair strain is less because of high stiffness of seal rod and because of low stiffness of rubber rod. Do you understand the physical significance of Young's modulus now? What is modulus of elasticity? Any, any doubt, feel free, guys. We'll discuss this. We have to discuss this. Okay. So, basically... <clears throat> For at least, you don't know what is isotropic material, but for time being, you know <clears throat> the basic thing about shear and basic, basic thing about elasticity is this. Just keep these two things in mind, then later you will understand this in more detail. That <coughs> high Young's modulus means low strain. Yes, high Young's modulus means, now when someone says Young's modulus, right, the only thing you should strike, it, it should strike in your mind is stiffness. The higher the stiffness, less the stain, right? Do you agree on this, Dilip? Agreed, right? Good, good, good. So it is something like this now. If stress is directly proportional to strain and this Young's modulus is proportionality constant. Now, normal stress directly proportional to normal strain in exactly similar, similar way Shear stress, any shear stress will be proportional to shear strain and the modulus is nothing but modulus of rigidity. This is nothing but stiffness in shear directions parallel to the surface. This G is nothing but known as shear modulus 
also known as modulus of rigidity. As of now, not more details needed. I already told you, I have a separate lecture on elastic constants in which I will give you the units relationship between E, G and different constants, whatever others are possible. As of now, I'm just trying to create or develop the relations which you people should understand. So there are two modulus. One connects normal stress with normal strain and one modulus which connects shear stress with shear strain. Now, the third modulus, which I want you time being to understand is, which is known as Poisson's ratio. All right. So before doing this, again, I'll take help of uh, one example and you people can easily relate. Again, the definition says, it, yes, 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 yes. Now, there are relations, which I, I told you, I will take a separate lecture and then uh, derive these expressions. All right. So now when we say Poisson's ratio, if you open any textbook, if you open any book, right, they will say it is lateral strain by longitudinal strain with a negative sign and so on. I, I want to keep it simple so that you can uh, imagine and visualize this. So if you have, let's say, a rod or a bar and you pull it. All right. Let me do it in a 3D sense so that you can easily imagine this in your mind. I've seen people having a problem in imagining things in structures. So let me try it out. All right, I hope you can imagine this now. There is a rod kind of thing. There is a bar. And what you do, this is the area. All right, and now what I'm doing is I'm pulling this bar with the force F. I hope this is easy. This, this you can relate. Now, once you pull it, what do you expect, guys? First thing, the expectations what we have is that this length will become more. Correct? Length of the bar should, elong should be more. It should be elongated. But I don't know how many of you expect this, but if you pull in one direction, right, the dimensions of the cross section should reduce. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is something like this. You, you should expect something like this, that this area reduces, but the length of the bar increases. Guys, do you people agree on this? If you pull a body, its length will increase, but its thickness will decrease in the other directions. Yes or no, guys? You agree, right? This is known as Poisson's effect. It is a material property. So E which is Young's modulus is a material property. G is a Young's modulus. Uh, G is a shear modulus, which is a material property. And now the next material property I'm saying is known as Poisson's ratio. Sometime in books, people denote this as new. Sometime in books, it is also denoted as mu. Any, any, just, this is simple notation difference. Now what this Poisson's ratio tells you this ratio tells you that if you pull one body in one direction, let's say we have done in longitudinal direction, we have increased the length. How much will be the decrease in the other directions? That's what is denoted as Poisson's ratio. So some material may decrease a lot. Maybe some material decrease a bit less. It will increase, but bit less. This depends upon material property which is known as Poisson's ratio. So steel will have different Poisson's ratio. Aluminium will have different. Rubber will have different. Cast iron will have different. Copper will have different. And I hope you understand these three elastic constants. So once controls the property in the normal direction, one control property in the shear direction, and the other control property in mix. If you pull in one, what happens in the other? It's kind of a, uh, what I can say, combining these two people together. Now, once you have this basic understanding, believe me, you will not find this in textbook, these explanations. They will, you will directly, if you open Megzen, right, you will directly get Hooke's law. But now I'm trying to uh, make you understand. If you understand these six equations, believe me, our 50% task of um, basic elasticity is over. After that, we have very, very small, small topics. I'll go to the list after this, uh, once this Hooke's law is covered. And then you will understand that why I'm stressing on this part. And this is, guys, 200% one gate numerical fixed on Hooke's law. 
Now, what is this Hooke's law? I want you to tell me if you want to calculate strain in x direction, what you learned up till now. If you want to calculate strain in x direction, if I pull a body in x direction, I already told you, right? Stress is directly proportional to strain and stress is equals to Young's modulus into strain. So from here, strain is stress divided by E. I hope you people agree on this. Now you can easily understand this. No need to remember this also. The bigger the E value, lesser the strain is. I have proved this with the help of a steel rod, right? Steel has bigger E. So the bigger the E, lesser the strains. Meaning, bigger the E means stiffer the body. The more body is stiffer, less strains we expect. But now comes the beautiful part. Guys, please listen to this. If I have any bar or a rod and I pull it in X direction, can you tell me what you expect should happen in Y and Z direction? So it should be more in length or less in length compared to the previous dimensions. Guys, I need, I want you people to respond on this. When you pull in X, when you pull in X means just see this term. I am applying some stress. Let's say I am pulling in X. So I expect strain in X. Definitely. If I pull in X, my length will increase, right? In X direction. Definitely. This I have already captured, Vijay. When I pull in X, its length will increase in X. <coughs> my question is what will happen in Y and Z? In other directions, dimensions will reduce, right? And who will control this? Poison's ratio. I'm telling you how to learn this. So when you pull in X, it's not only that you get stress in X, strain in X, you will get strain in Y also, something like this, minus new sigma X by E. Now understand each and every term here. You know sigma X is the force with which you are pulling in X direction. But when you pull in X direction, you are having problem in Y directions also. And who is controlling it? This Poisson's ratio, mu. And why you have a negative sign? This negative sign says when you are pulling in X direction, that means sigma X by E. If you are increasing in length here, you should decrease here. If you decrease here, automatically this will increase. This will come with plus sign then. This is this term is known as Poisson's effect, but not only X direction will reduce. If you pull in X, I have reduction in Z direction also. Guys, please listen to this. What I, whatever equations you have written here, right? Is is that is for that bar only? When I pull it in X, its length increases in X. I hope you people agree. But if you see in Y, there is a decrement and in Z also it reduces. So only this stress is acting, but <coughs> only X axis stress will not change my X axis strains. It will also change my strains in Y and Z and hence a negative term. So if this length increases, automatically my Y and Z will decrease because of Poisson's ratio. If X direction decreases, automatically Y and Z will increase. So if you try to compress a body, its longitudinal directions will decrease, but the other directions Y and Z will definitely going to increase. Now, we're not going to pull only in X, right? I will pull in Y also. So when you pull in Y, guys, this is the part I want you to understand because you need to write these Hooke's law in every other topic. Every topic, you need to repeat Hooke's law. So what do you mean by if I pull in Y? If I pull in Y, I get a direct effect in Y. If I pull in Y, my length will increase in Y. But my length will decrease in X because of pull in Y and my length will decrease in Z because of pull in Y. 
and the last term if i pull in z this is a direct effect but in x and y direction i have problem or the negative effect which is poisson's effect these are three equations which are known as not complete we have three more okay let me finish that so i can cal if i want to calculate change in length in x direction right you are pulling in x so it is increasing my length but because you were pulling in y and z also right they try to decrease my length overall i need to check whether my x length is increased or decreased that depends upon the quotient's numericals how we'll going to solve it and before opening up for doubts let me just quickly finish this part there are three more equations which relates shear stress and shear strain but now the easy part is that shear stresses and shear strains doesn't have any poisson's effect so gamma which is strain in xy is directly related to stress in xy divided by g i told you right any stress is directly proportional to strains and here we proportionality constant is nothing but our shear modulus so if you want to calculate strain it is stress divided by g that's what i am writing here so stress in x yeah gamma xy is tau xy g similarly if you want to calculate gamma xz it is tau xz by g and similarly if you calculate gamma yz it is tau yz divided by g guys these six equations in structures known as hooke's law these are the only relation which connect all stresses and strain and who is the person connecting these uh, stresses and strain are elastic constants what are the elastic constants we have seen young's modulus shear modulus and poisson's ratio these are the co modulus only needed for isotropic material again this is not of interest as of now that there are uh, <clears throat> um Uh, three constants is isotropic I, i told you i will take a separate lecture on this as of now i just want you people to understand that whether you and I, I, i open up for doubts guys please any small thing you want me to repeat please let me know guys i i am happy to repeat or clear all your doubts here and if it is clear please let me know so that i can move ahead come on guys yeah it's applicable for all object this is dilip this is structural equations you are developing it's not depending upon any object anything made up of any material this is possible our force is acting on x direction also all these equations are force is acting on x direction also no monisha <clears throat> when i take this system right which i have drawn here if you see i have applied in x direction y also there is a force right z also there is a force so this is generalized you are pulling it in x y and z see when you apply only in x there is only sigma x when you apply only in y there is only sigma y other are zero so when you have in one equation sigma x sigma y sigma z tau x y tau x z tau y z that means you are pulling you are uh, applying shear force in all possible directions is it clear uh, somewhat monisha it's if not it's perfectly fine i'll repeat this see just keep one thing in mind uh, okay this is a good doubt so let me clear it when you have a body right let let me do it with the help of a simple block so that it's easier for me this is a 3d body right so if you pull this body in x this is sigma x right now i am not only doing this i am pulling it in y also and i am pulling it in z also and not only this i am applying shear forces also i hope my point is clear now do you under understood this monisha so i am applying this if if in your numerical they say there is only one stress sigma x 
So you will make sigma y zero, sigma z zero, tau x y zero. I'll show you a numerical. You will feel good about it. All right. Let me <clears throat> let me back my theory that this is good part. Actually, when you do structures right, you should have a doubt. So let me make it better with the help of this numerical. So let's do it together, guys. I'll solve every numerical, but this is just to make you people feel good that what we have done is uh, how they are asked, asking in your exam. This is the question asked in 2019. This is question number 23 asked for one mark. So if you see, there is a plate. All right. Now, first of all, seeing the numerical itself, can you tell me, is this a 2D numerical or a 3D numerical? When you see any structures, right? We need to understand the numerical first. Is this a 2D numerical or a 3D numerical? This is 2D numerical. So there is no, no point of talking about Z. Your entire, Pooja, why it is 3D? They have given the coordinate system, right? A plate, a plate is a 2D, right? So, so you should never, never ever bother about uh, your Hooke's law or any equation in terms of Z. Your whole formulas will be converted only in terms of X and Y. All right. First thing to always make your numericals easier. Now let's read this to this rod. You pull it in X direction. If you see you're pulling it in X direction with Sigma X hundred in both the directions. You're pulling it in Y direction with Sigma Y 240. Fine. Is there any shear stress here? Guys, I am expecting you to answer this. So you know your sigma x. It is given to you as 100 MPa. You know your sigma y, which is given as 240 MPa. And in 2D, if you people recall, there are only three stresses, right? I'll go back to my revision. Okay, I have not written here. I have written it for 3D. But you people know for 2D, there are only two stress, three stresses, right? Sigma X, Sigma Y, and Tau XY. And in this numerical, there is no such stress which is acting in parallel, right? Nothing is given. So Tau XY in this numerical is zero. It is not given to you. Up, to, up till now, I'm not, I'm not solving my numerical. I'm just understanding my data. Now, if you see, <clears throat> a thin plate with Young's modulus of 210 GPA and Poisson's ratio of 0 0.3. So first of all, can you anyone tell me what is this Young's modulus? I hope you people agree. Young's modulus is 210 GPA. Young's modulus means capital E. Don't worry about this GPA, MPA. I'll explain everything in this numerical. Poisson's ratio, which is new, is also a material property, is 0 0.3. It's fine is loaded as shown in the figure. So this is the plate with this material is loaded as shown in the figure. How it is loaded? These are the load properties. I have pulled it in X, pulled it in Y and nothing in shear. The change in length along the Y direction is fill in the blank MM, round it off to one decimal place. Now, physically in your mind, can you tell me <coughs> When you pull it in X with 100 and you pull it in Y with 250, what do you expect? It's, it should increase its length in Y direction, right? And when you increase in Y direction, automatically X should decrease, but you're also pulling in X. So slight confusion. But I know one thing, it, its length should increase in Y direction. That's what they're asking. What is change in length? That's what I need to calculate. Let's do it together. If you know stresses, I can calculate strains, right? Now, guys, and um, uh, Monisha, please tell me this now. If you want to calculate strain in X direction, or let's calculate strain in Y direction first. Why? Because I want change in length in Y direction, right? What is change in, uh, what is strain in Y direction? If I pull in Y, my strain will be positive. My length will increase, but yes, X person, which is pulling it in X direction is creating problem. See what, is, what will happen guys. When you pull it in Y, it will try to increase its length. Correct. But when you pull it in X, it will increase. It will try to increase its length in X direction, but it will try to decrease its length in Y direction. Right guys. Yes or no guys, please. I need your response in this. 
you agreed on this right perfect perfect and that's what is written in this equation <clears throat> if you want to calculate what is my final change in y i need to take poisson's effect problem because of x direction pull and my y direction direct formula now let's see whether we know all these or not i know new minus 0.3 sigma x it is given as 100 i'll explain you the units in just give me one minute so unit is mpa so I, i'll explain you as of now i'll try to keep everything in mpa divide by e which is 210 gpa right this is giga pascal and you're writing sigma x in mega pascal. So I've multiplied this with 10 to the power three. Don't worry, I'll tell you the unit conversion. As of now, I'm just want to solve some numbers. Plus sigma y is 240 divided by E, which is 210 into 10 to the power three. This will be strain in y direction. Change in length divided by original length. That's what the meaning of strain is, right? So if you solve this, you will get strain in Y. Can anyone tell me what is the strain? Vijay, can you help me in this? What is the strain in Y? Yeah, you already got the final answer, right? <clears throat> so whatever number you have, okay. He gave me answer as 0 0.001. And uh, Vijay, you can't have unit in strains. Archisman, is this 0 0.001 or 0 0.01? And change in length, any strain is change in length divided by original length, right? And what is origin, original length in y direction? It was 200 mm. Correct, right? And the final answer, if you multiply this 200 to this side, this came out to be, yes, 0 0.2 mm. That's what the change in length in y direction we got is this clear monisha you i hope you understood now so this numerical it was pulled in x also it was pulled in y also <clears throat> come on everyone everyone please respond shashi is this clear manish narendra come on guys is this fine for everyone so when you read a numerical yes okay good yeah Rukma also understood this issue uh, Perfect. Good. So I again kind of summarize this. If in the numerical they don't give you sigma, why make it as zero? But you should be in a habit or in a position to write your Hooke's law very properly whatever data is provided, substitute and calculate whatever they are asking. Now, why I have started with Y direction strain because they're asking me change in length in Y direction. If they ask in change in X, I will write change in X. What is change in X? It is not asked, but still I am writing it. X stress will be direct effect, but problem because of Y pull that is poison's effect. Then I can calculate change in X direction also. I hope everyone is clear in this. If not, I'll solve many of these numerical. This is just a beginning. So <clears throat> before going for this, I want you people to understand this uh, Pascal's mega Pascal and giga Pascal, because I've seen people struggling a lot in uh, structural <coughs> terminologies. Yeah, correct. Let me explain this. So when we say Pascal, right? This is nothing but Newton per meter square. That's what we say, right? Force by area is stress and stress is measured in terms of Pascals. But when we come to aircraft terminologies, right? We will talk our, our uh, units will become Newton and mm. We don't like meter. Why? Because meter is big and we are talking about very thin wall structures, thicknesses are 1 mm, 2 mm, 0.2 you have calculated in this numerical. So it's better to make sense in terms of mm because meter will be very small number here. Meter will be 0 0.00001 meter. That doesn't make sense. All right. Now, what we can do is we can convert this 
m meter into millimeter by how you can do this by multiplying with 10 to the power minus 3 once you do it this newton per mm square is nothing but mega pascals guys nothing fancy how i have converted this meter meter will be converted into mm by multiplying with 10 to the power minus 6 it is in denominators right it goes in numerator that means it is multiplied with 10 to the power 6 so mega pascal or newton per mm square are one and the same thing so in the numerical when they ask if you see they have given my stresses in mega pascal make sure that all your dimensions are in mm see my length is in mm no problem this length is in mm no problem so this is a habit for you i will make this habit um, more uh, uh, i will stress on this habit i whatever numerical comes right the first thing i will do is if my forces are given in kilo newtons i will convert it into newtons by multiplying with 10 to the power 3 if my dimensions or anything are given in meters i will convert into mm so all your aircraft problem should be solved in newton and mm so if they so the best unit for you is newton per mm square or mega pascal it's one and the same thing now if you say giga pascal giga pascal is pascal is this mega pascal is 10 to the power 6 multiplied giga pascal is 10 to the power 9 multiplied so in between these two people there is a difference of 10 to the power 3 which you have which you have not used here in the numerical but you should know this this is just an introduction you have seen this or you are doing this for the first time so you will slowly slowly develop this and it will be easy for you to understand come on guys tell me give me a quick nod is this fine okay just to make you people understand every numerical i will solve as of now i'm just doing which is needed what we have done <clears throat> this is asked in 2017 this is question number 52 so this is asked for two marks in your gate exam it's a numerical answer type let us let's see whether we understood this or not for the state of plane stress now you don't know what plane stress is but don't get fear of it just see the diagram you understood that uh, you will later see that plane stress is a spatial condition which is in between 3d and 2d uh, i will come to that later as shown in the figure can you tell me forget about the numerical seeing the diagram can you tell me what data is provided there is sigma x which they have not given me the value this sigma x can you tell me what is this 21 correct sigma y is 21 now read it properly mega newton per meter square what is newton per meter square pascals right so this is just to given you confused to be confused this is mega pascal i'm again repeating this mega newton per meter square means mega pascal and mega pascal means newton per mm square all these three things are same guys so sigma y is given as 21 mpa and what is this guys this quantity 56 yes this is tau xy but now you will do a mistake tau xy no 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 is minus 56 mpa now i don't know how many of you recall the sign convention was this and i literally shouted at that point to make you understand what was the sign convention guys if this is sigma x it is going in x direction tau xy is this this is positive tau xy and once you have decided this complementary nature they should never uh, follow a loop this is what our sign convention is do you recall rugma other people vijay <laughs> so what is this 56 this is tau xy but with a negative sign guys clear
good good so it's fine let's say seeing the diagram itself i have written my data i don't know what is sigma x so i don't know this value the minimum principal stress is minus 7 mega newtons per meter square can you tell me what is this as per our sign convention what we have solved up till now what is this minus 7 mega newtons per meter square yes minimum means smaller minor principal stress so this is sigma 2 which is minus 7 mega pascals perfect the normal stress sigma x is equals to what so they are asking me sigma x if i'll solve this i'll get easy two marks in my gate exam now the question is i have two ways i have formulas correct and i have properties i want you to always now when we already know both the methods right try to go for properties what are properties guys sum of diagonal elements is equals to sum of principal stresses what is principal stresses sigma one plus sigma 2 is equals to sum of normal stresses. This is a property which will never fail. Always it is true. It's an eigenvalue method. So match will not fail. So this property will not fail. Again, repeat this. Sum of principal stresses is equals to sum of normal stresses. Property 1. What is property 2? Product of principal stresses is equals to determinant of the matrix. What is determinant? Sigma x, sigma y minus tau square xy. You know, this numerical can be given to you like this also, right? Like our stress tensor. Sigma x, we don't know. Sigma y is 21. And this is minus 56. This is minus 56. I told you, lecture one. They can give you numerical like this or like this. There are multiple ways of asking the numerical. Now you have two equations. And let's see whether you know these two equations or not. So I'm substituting. These are the two equations, guys. These are the properties. As per the numerical, I'm substituting the value. So what is sigma 1? I don't know. Let me solve this with different color. Sigma 1, I don't know. Sigma 2 is minus 7. Sigma x, I don't know. Sigma y is 21. So this is one equation. Sigma 1, I don't know. Sigma 2 is minus 7. So this becomes minus 7 sigma 1 is equals to 21 into sigma x minus tau square. Now, those who have done mistake with plus and minus here, right? Here, if you have done mistake in your exam, luckily you will not get any problem because all the formulas will have tau square. So plus 56 square or minus 56 square is one and the same thing. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is you have two unknowns, sigma 1 and sigma x. And you have two equations. You know how to solve two equations simultaneously in maths. What you can do is you can take this sigma one value, substitute in the other, solve it. Can anyone tell me what is the correct answer for this? Yeah, this is asked in 2017. Question number 52. Anyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have solved this in your study in material books also. Every numerical is in your book, guys. That is not the issue. So numbers always you can verify. See, my intent is not to make you understand what are the numbers and how, how we are doing plus and minus. My intent is whether you understood the process. If you solve this, you will get sigma x as 105 MPA. That's what they have asked. If you solve these two equations, and definitely you can even solve for sigma 1, which came out to be 133 mega Pascal. This is after solving these two equations you will get the value. Now, if we have problem in understanding solving these equations, you can let me know. I, <coughs> I can even uh, explain you those part. But what I'm trying to tell you is, if you see any numerical, write and understand the data, step one. Step two, check what we want to calculate with the given data and with what we want to calculate. Then step three is deciding a formula. If you read the complete numerical and write everything without following these steps, you will not going to solve not only structures, not, no, no technical or no, no numerical at all. So step one is understand the data provided. Step two, what you want to calculate. Step three, 
with the data and what you want to calculate which formula connects them which formula relates them together never ever deviate in units always try to be in mega pascals which is also known as mega newton per mm square and then you have different formulas now those who don't want to go by this method they can go by formula also but that will be lengthy method so if you know and you can verify this guys sigma x 105 sigma y is 21 correct if you add these two you should get same answer as sigma 1 plus sigma 2 sigma 1 is 133 this is minus 7 so this is 126 both are getting 126 this property will never be violated another thing just before wrapping it up sigma 1 is major principal stress you can never have stress bigger than this you see sigma x is 105 sigma y is 21 sigma 2 is minus 7 so this sigma 1 which is known as major principal stress in your system no stress can be bigger than this no stress can be smaller than this sigma 2 which is minor principal stress and whatever after this you write sigma x sigma y sigma z as per the numerical it will always be in between these two max and minimum this is the reason this is the motive of calculating principal stresses to calculate the extreme things please tell me guys is this part clear to all of you thank you so much